<laughs> that is possibly going to be the beginning of it. <laughs> did it there start? We go. It did start. It did start. Uh, we're still we're still figuring out this whole Google Hangout thing. Uh, give Just, us a go. Little, Just yeah. go. Just okay. go, man. Uh, hey guys, Eric and Matt here. We're gonna do a, a quick chat about the Under the Dome premiere. It aired last night as we record this, so this will be full spoilers. So if you haven't seen the Under the Dome premiere, you should listen to this because we're about to ruin it for you. Eric, are you aware that a similar premise was done in the Simpsons movie? I hadn't I... thought of that, but now that you point that out, it's very similar, and I hate Under the Dome. It's the worst thing ever, and all I can think about is how it's exactly the Simpsons movie. I'm gonna go put. I'm gonna go post a board comment about that. We should point that out in a message board comment yeah. and again and again and again and again because it gets really interesting and clever the more we point out that it's just like, I, I can't wait till season four of Under the Dome when we're just like, it's just like the Simpsons movie. <laughs> it's just like the last act of the Simpsons movie. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so Under the Dome uh, premiered last night on CBS uh, to very good ratings, by the way, which holds... It did the, well for itself. Did well for itself, which is uh, promising for the future of the show. Uh, but, you know, uh, a big debut for CBS in the summer when they really mostly ignore scripted shows. Well, and, uh, and uh, also it means that people will go to CBS for a genre show. Yeah, yeah. You know, people will go there, you know. It's not, you know, usually these networks have their own little, uh, their grooves, their their uh, their audiences, but people will go to, and that's what, we, I, I'm only saying that because that's what we're hoping for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right, People right. will go to ABC for an off-brand show for ABC. Yeah, and you know CBS. Of course, they were they were being careful in that they premiered it in the summer, so it wasn't airing with all their other procedural shows where it might seem more strange. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let's let's get right to it, Matt. You wrote the review of it. Uh, what did you think of Under the Dome? I liked it, and it's hard for me to not talk about Lost a lot. You know, Brian K. Vaughn, who developed this show for the Stephen King story for TV, was the writer for Lost. Actually, Jack Bender, the uh, a big time uh, producer and a director of a lot of Lost episodes directs next week's uh, Under the Dome. And he's uh, the regular... He didn't direct the pilot, but he's going to be, like with Lost, the regular like, director. Yeah. yeah, a recurring director and, and sort of collaborator on the series. Um, and also just the premise itself. A big mysterious thing happened. We meet the ensemble cast. Um, it, it doesn't happen right at the outset like in Lost, where it just opens with everybody... The thing already crashed on the beach. But very soon after the, at the top, right. the dome falls or appears. It looked like it fell, didn't it? Kind of like boom... Yeah, like it was a dome that just kind of capped down onto the the, the village, right? Um, but yeah, I liked it. I think it's a good mystery, and I think, and um, again, with like with Lost, you know, I'm being very wary not to get caught up in what is the dome necessarily, simply because you know you want to kind of want to prepare yourself, buffer yourself for the fact that maybe the answer is not going to satisfy you. So. You really want to invest in the characters. You want to look for that, and you also want to look for what does this mean for the town to be in a dome? Because I think that's probably where the story lies. Uh, we've only been in the dome for a day, but you know they have no communication in the outside world. They have whatever resources they only have in the town, and who knows how long that's going to last. And they have is kind of an annoying character, um, the uh, Stephen King psychopath card. You know, in all of his stories, you know, because I wrote that that uh, Stephen King on TV feature, and in all the stories with these big events, there's always that one weird, like loose screw, loose cannon. Uh, it's in the Langoliers. It's in anything that's. There's always the weird, outcast, crazy person yeah. who makes everything worse. And that was in the character of Junior that we found out by the end of the episode was the son of Breaking Bad's Dean Norris character, uh, Big Jim Rennie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Junior because I think for both of us he was probably the biggest uh, negative on what was a show I too really liked. Uh, I really liked the pilot. Uh, he was the biggest sort of, you know, kind of eye rolling aspect I'd say, mostly because we had to we had to buy that so much happened with him just in that first episode. Maybe if they'd slowly had him kind of go crazy, it was to... it was from what it was from the first scene to the next. Yeah, like it was literally in one scene, like. He's having sex with Britt Robertson. He's someone uh, Britt Robertson would have sex with. So we don't know why. We don't <laughs> right, know why she right. was doing that, and especially because he he tells her that you're the only one who knows the real me. Like so, she apparently knows how he is. Yeah, right? it wasn't a lark. Uh, so she, yeah, she does it on purpose, and then leaves. And then the next scene, he's like considering slashing his arm with his uh, oh, and his like weird retro switchblade and his leather jacket and all that stuff. Well, that's another King thing. He has like a lot of '50s fetish sort of things that, that kind of yeah. Leads he, to even it. even for a quaint main town, 
it was um you know it still feels throwbacky because I've been to Maine a lot now and uh, there are small towns but they don't have necessarily that king vibe of the the fifties feel like you said there's there's no greaser hanging around <laughs> not that I saw <laughs> All right. um, and we should also mention and uh, because I'm sure I'm sure we'll get some heat for the fact that neither of us have read this book we've both read a lot of Stephen King but we haven't read Under the Dome uh, no. which I I kind of think is fun because. There's so many things on the air, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, where I do know what the source material is, and I'm comparing it. This one, I might read the book. I'm not sure. But either of us have read the book. Um, they've already said that the ending will be different, and I do know the ending of the book didn't make a lot of people happy. And They've already said that whatever the ending is of this show, should they reach that point a few years from now, will not be the book ending. But, um, yeah, I'd say it, it did a very good job of, yeah, establishing, look, it's a pilot, and so much exciting stuff's going to happen because it, the crisis had just begun. But as far as establishing that mood, that atmosphere, you know, the cool sort of moments, whether they be the cow split in two or the airplane or the truck, I thought all that stuff was very cool. And now uh, Dean Norris, he gets to be the one cooking meth. Yes, yes, exactly. Maybe. <laughs> There's, uh, you know, they, they did a good well, job. I mean, like, not... I mean not, not cooking, but, you know, allowing yeah. it to happen. Like it was certainly implied by the end. Right, right. Um, Certainly, there's uh, we we get the idea of the yeah, the drug trade and yeah, the the underbelly of this town and how will that be affected by this crisis happening? And the uh, the Jeff Fahey appeared as sort of the false hero plant. I mean, Mike Vogel's in there as probably the real hero. But yeah. Jeff Fahey, who winds up, I guess, dying by the end of the episode. I guess I think he's still so. There, but you know, he was unlost and he probably can't. You know, he's a out of all of them, he's a notable face that people would recognize as sort of a star. Uh, but they took him out by the end of the episode, as, almost in a Joss Whedon-y type move. Um, but I thought that was really cool. And um, yeah, I liked I liked the the premise, and I liked the fact that uh, you know not at the, I, I yeah the teenage daughter also annoyed me too. <laughs> the the the, uh, the the three what was it Samantha Mathis and her yeah. and her partner and the, her daughter like from L.A. Yeah, um, they were a little annoying too. But uh, yeah, they most, were. Annoying. I like most of the characters, which I say think is good, because even on a show like Lost, Sawyer eventually became a really cool character once you get started getting into the. He had his flashback episode moments and stuff like right. that. At the beginning of Lost, he was really annoying. Yeah, yeah, and it, it does take time with a lot of the characters, but I think they did again, especially TV pilots where they they only have forty four minutes. They can't go anything over that, and so with with that little time, I thought they did a good job. I think Mike Vogel's character Barbie. Uh, you know, he seems established as kind of the anti-hero. Clearly, we know he was up to no good, but whether he had a justification or not for what he did, we'll find I'm assuming, out. I'm assuming the man he killed, the husband of the reporter, I don't know yeah. any of their names, but... Uh, Julia uh, is the reporter. Julia. Well, I'm assuming yeah. Julia's husband was a bad person. Right, I'm assuming right. his secret is he killed another bad person, you know, so yeah. it makes it not such a bad thing, like if he's just, you know, like squabbling with other crooks and drifters, you know. Yeah, and I think uh, I think it's going to be that thing of you know him, uh, Barbie and Julia, kind of being the 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 two heroes of the show, and she's going to be a little more straightforward. Where him, it's a little more mysterious. What his background is, what he was doing there. But I do think with uh, with Big Jim, it's a good establishment for the guy who. Uh, and yeah, yeah, he happens to be bald, but I still think the kingpin, as far as the idea that he was already kind of a big fish in a small town, small pond. But now that they can't reach out to anyone else, the fact that he would see sort of the ability to maybe grab some power because no one will have anyone else to turn to. Yeah, you know, I think is what they've what they've established there. And the uh, DJs are the Hurley of the show. And the DJs are the Hurley. Yeah. Now, what do you think? I, I went to a, a screening of this premiere, and they did a Q and A with Brian K. Vaughn and Neil Bear, another producer, and they did ask them sort of, how do you deliver like? sort of big moments after this, uh, because obviously the moment when the dome happened is when we're going to have all the crazy accidents occur, you know? After that, people shouldn't be driving into the dome. Uh, so I, I am mean, curious. I mean, again, I keep going back to loss, but the plane crash happens once. Right. You know, and then after that, it's, you know, they still have to answer the, the, the kids who, the teenagers who fall down on the ground and start saying, you know, frothing and saying, what is it, the stars are falling? I can't remember what they're... The right. Phrases that they keep saying. So there's mystery there. I think they have to plan out, a, you know, dole out the mystery slowly, kind of like on Lost. Um, and 
within within the show too, there's already also going to be the drama, like you said, of Big Jim seizing the opportunity to gain power. There's going to be a lot of human elements to focus on, with the fact that most of these people aren't they're not strangers like on Lost. They know each other, you know, they have a history together, um, and now they're all confined in one spot. Uh, one of the things that I didn't put in my review that I thought was funny is that. There were certain parts where I kind of felt, and it's TV, so you kind of have to balance the the melodrama a little bit, that they weren't freaking out enough right, sometimes, right. you know, like especially by the end when uh, the kids were like had the bonfire and were partying by the dome, mm-hmm. you know, like because um, right at the end they cut to the outside world and we saw a brief glimpse of the reporters yeah. and people talking about it. They're freaking out. <laughs> People in the town are kind of like, who knows how long this will last? Right. You know, like they're, they're just like, ah, what are we gonna do? Hey, you know what this reminds me of the Simpsons movie. That's yeah, what they're all like, saying. And and then they're like, oh, not the Simpsons movie again. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, but at least it was good to know that the people on the outside thought that this was a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely think there's a lot of good things established, and because I like Britt Robertson, I hope she gets out of her storyline soon, uh, because... Yeah, uh, yeah, if she has to be in that uh, underground bunker from, like, more than more than the next episode, it's going to be a little unnerving. Right, right. But we should, uh, and I do want to take this opportunity, a lot of people are confused by the fact that, yeah, this is not a miniseries. It was never intended as a miniseries. Obviously, if it failed, it would have been one season. Right now, you know, it looks pretty optimistic. So this is, you know, planned as a, a multi-year show. Um, and, uh, you know, it seemed like the first the first episode was just one day, and I think they're going to mostly stick to that, uh, where, like, each episode is one day in this town. So you can slowly dole things out that way. So, I mean, like, think, then things won't get really, like, intense till season three or so. Probably. That's when they mean, start eating it, each other. Thir- I mean, 13 episodes, right? Yeah. For the per season, I mean, which is good considering you have this one location and you can't really leave it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then if you're saying by the end it's only been 13 days, well, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, they haven't, they will. Now, I, now I hate this show. <laughs> no, now you hate this show. Okay, well, but wrapping up, before you hate the show, uh, you, you reviewed it for IGN. What did you give uh, the score for it? I don't remember. 8.3? Yes. 8.4? I happen to know the answer to that question. 8.3 or 8.4? 8.3. <laughs> right. 8. Uh, one of those. You know, it was good. Again, I had a few um, reservations about a couple of the characters. Uh, you can't like everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, I thought it was uh, pretty engaging. I want to know what happens. I want to know what happens to the town. Uh, especially now that the one guy who you would think would oppose Dean Norris's character the most just had his pacemaker explode out of his chest. So Right. And I think the question there will be with Linda, the deputy, like sort of how much will she rise up as the leader of the authorities, you know, mm-hmm. in, in future episodes. I, w- I oh, think she's I'd... the first. She's the first to eat somebody. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're calling it first to be cannibal. And it's, and it's it's not even out. Is and it happens before the food runs out. It's just like day three. <laughs> she just always wanted to try it. <laughs> yeah, you know, she has an excuse. There you go. Uh, I would give it about the same, I think, about an eight. I think it's a very entertaining pilot. Uh, pilots have a tricky job to do, establishing so much and grabbing you. I think this one, you know, junior aside, uh, did that in a lot of good ways. So I'm definitely intrigued to see where it goes. I'm glad it's a success uh, so far. Uh, one episode. We'll see how it goes next week. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let us know what you thought in the comments below about Under the Dome. Will you be watching more? And uh, thanks for watching this, guys. We'll be back with more at IGN.com slash TV.